Um, and so, finally, some results. Um, I'm going to give you some summary data. So I'm still working on writing up these results for publication. Um, so I'll give you some overall summaries and a couple of case studies and then talk about where the project has gone. Um, so first, we see that very similar to in those ELS lakes, um, lake water, total merc mercury, was um, related to lake water methylmercury, again, suggesting that um, total mercury is a pretty good surrogate for methylmercury in the water. And in this case, the correlation was the strongest for the Adirondack region. Um, as opposed to the rest of New England. However, there are many fewer main lakes here, so we couldn't see that correlation. Um, and again, DOC was largely um, a good predictor of lake water total mercury or lake water methylmercury on the right axis. Um, so we're getting pretty strong correlations again, suggesting that, yes, DOC is a good predictor for mercury in water. However, um, by bringing in the biotic piece, uh, we've begun to try to see how mercury in the water and in the biota can be decoupled and try to piece together what factors are driving biotic mercury. So uh, what's going on? Can we explain the decoupling? Um, and so I'll show a couple of cases where I think we can um, begin to do that. Um, so if we look at um, a selected number of the lakes uh, and look at lake water total mercury here on the x-axis and dragonfly larvae total mercury, um, there's not a great correlation. <laughs> We're not able to say if lake water mercury is x, then dragonfly mercury will be y. And even less so for methylmercury in lake water compared to dragonfly.